welcome as we begin to descend the mount. Yeah. We've been on this journey now for several months together. Mm -hmm. What we said, ascending the mount, mm -hmm. sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to his teachings. And so basically what we're doing is wrapping up chapter seven and we get to hear Jesus with kind of some final instructions, almost a sending out uh, with all of the things that we've heard. Like, what does that look like now as we engage and, and continue to um, live out these, um, this way of Jesus? So today, as we begin our concluding series, we're talking about um, as we obey Jesus, our Father stands ready to help us. Yeah, and so one of the first things in these closing remarks, if you will, of the mm -hmm. Sermon on the Mount uh, Jesus talks about is, you know, coming to the Lord, asking, seeking, knocking, and, and that we will find if we pursue these things and we ask God for them, he will provide them for us. And uh, kind of one of the questions is like, well, provide what, you know? And so in our, in our services today, you know, I'll be sharing about uh, a parallel passage in Luke, where in that teaching, it's recorded that Jesus ends this with, uh, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask mm. Him? And certainly as we descend the mount and, right. and go to like put these things into practice, if you will, we recognize a need for help, right? Mm. Like we need uh, some power. We need some help because in, in our own strength and power, we know where we end up. And that's mm. why we have the Sermon on the Mountain of you know, Jesus right. sharing like, well, here's my way of life is different. So, okay, well, if we want to live different, we're going to need His help. Yeah. And, and uh, so, yeah, what great hope then that we have the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting to draw this connection as we are rounding out the sermon um, because there's one vein of Christian interpretation that views the whole Sermon on the Mount as really Jesus um, giving an impossible proposal of life mm -hmm. and that we're incapable of doing this, hence the need for a savior. Well, certainly, while there is undoubtedly a need for the saving work of Jesus, and while we do fall short in the pursuit to be like him, what we would suggest is that actually Jesus is inviting us into a way of life that is possible because of the empowering work mm -hmm. of his Holy Spirit in our lives. And right. this may be like the piece that connects that dot yes, for us. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so when we think about the Holy Spirit, there's a lot about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in the New Testament, uh, especially it talks a lot about the Holy Spirit and, and what that is what that means for the believer, mm -hmm. you know? And so we've got two passages today. One's talking about what is referred to as the gifts of the Holy Spirit and one about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And these are both things that the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, maybe you are familiar with the idea of spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've encountered something like that along your Christian journey. Maybe that's a new concept to you, but there's actually multiple places, especially in Paul's writings, where he reminds believers that when we experience the saving work of Jesus, part of that infilling work of the Spirit then is to enliven a gift within us. At least one is the promise of scripture, which actually is an interesting thing. I've had people look me dead in the eye multiple times as a pastor actually say, I didn't get one of those. Like <laughs> I don't, I don't have a spiritual gift and I can with confidence look back and, and assure them and you today, if you're a follower of Jesus who has the spirit dwelling within you, he says that he has gifted you with at least one spiritual gift for the good of the body. Spiritual gifts are for that. They are to edify um, the church and to help further um, the kingdom mission of God's church. And so we're talking about things like the gifts of service and helps and generosity and encouragement. And um, certainly, you know, we also see some of those sign gifts uh, demonstrated in scripture, things like tongues and healing and prophecy. Um, and so that's a whole different can of worms maybe mm -hmm. that we yeah. open. The point of the matter is, is this is one of the things that we can actually ask 
the right. father for um, and ask even for clarity like will you help reveal to me how mm -hmm. it is that you're gifting me so that I can contribute meaningfully to your kingdom it's also another good way to kind of give a litmus test sometimes like if you're seeking for what what maybe where are my spiritual gifts ask godly people around you like what do you see in me um, and that might even be a cool exercise to do in your group today is like i see in you the gift of helps like you mm -hmm. love serving behind the scenes and do amazing things you know that you're not looking for the limelight but you're just always there to serve like it, you could edify people in your group today in that way absolutely uh, so the other passage deals with what's called the fruit of the Spirit, and I don't know, maybe one way of thinking of, of it would be like if the gifts of the Spirit are for things that you could do for the kingdom and mm -hmm. for the church, then maybe the fruit of the Spirit really has to do with who we're becoming, right? Mm -hmm. who, who you're going to be in Christ. And uh, that's a list of things like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. And it's just these attributes, right? Self-control, all those kinds of things that the Spirit produces in the life of a believer. Mm -hmm. And I guess different from the gifts where you're promised at least one, uh, the fruit of the Spirit seems to be kind of like, a, well, this is the fruit, mm -hmm. singular, you know, like the, this is what it looks like. This is a, a word picture of right. what the Holy Spirit wants to produce in the life of every believer. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, you, you don't look for love and not peace or whatever, right. you know, you're looking for the whole package, you know, and um, <laughs> this is what God wants to produce in the life of the people that are following Jesus. And so um, this is really cool that we're promised these things by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I guess one of the things that I would mention when it comes to desiring the Holy Spirit is uh, in my own life, I've had seasons where I've really desired to experience the Holy Spirit, really more for my own uh, faith and for my own like sense of I matter for the kingdom, you know, or I'm doing something great for the kingdom or whatever. Uh, and increasingly I hear the, the words of Paul ringing in my ears of don't desire those things as much as love because uh, you could have the greatest spiritual gifts, but if you don't have love, then what do you have? Right. You know, and so really I've learned to turn my attention increasingly towards the fruit of the Spirit and just wanting to be the kind of person that God wants me to be. But, um, but certainly gifts have an important place too. Yeah, so. absolutely. And it almost is the beauty of how a gift then is wrapped, if you will, mm -hmm. like the delivery. So if I have the spiritual gift of teaching, mm -hmm. but I'm not manifesting the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. through that teaching, then I could be a gifted teacher, but it's not going to maybe be received in the same way or um, be as impactful, right? Or as certainly as reflective of the heart of God, yeah. because I'm missing the fruit mm -hmm. behind that gift that really enlivens, animates that gift yes. in a way that is of him and not of me. So what do you think about asking, seeking, and knocking? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? You know, if we're desiring something from the Lord, and maybe everybody would have a chance today to kind of sit with that question of like, what do I want from the mm -hmm. Lord? Um, but then, okay, we're going to ask him for it. That's easy enough, maybe. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. We'll pray for it. Do um, you think seeking and knocking entails more than simply mm -hmm. prayer, or is that just about persistence? Like a further pursuit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be it'd like a, a more intentional uh, aim for mm -hmm. what it is that we are mm -hmm. seeking. Uh, so I don't know. What are your so, thoughts? Sometimes I think maybe that leans into some of the formational habits and stuff mm -hmm. we've talked about, you know, of like, um, well, if I want the Lord to produce this in my life, then what can I do as a, in a habit sort of way mm -hmm. uh, that might help me grow in that? Like I can partner with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in some way, right? Um, so if I want to grow in generosity, then I should make a habit of being generous. You know? a step of like, obedience, what's a step? Yeah, right. Where I'm actively seeking mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that activity in my life. Yeah. yeah, that's good. But I think it'd be interesting for you to kick, kind of kick mm -hmm. that around in your group and see what kind of ideas come out around what does it look like to ask and seek and knock. So we'll look forward to descending the rest of the mount with you in the coming weeks.